Now, I know we talk about NXT and kind of refer to it as its own brand, damn near in a lot of ways like it's its own company. We know that to not be true. We know NXT is a part of the WWE umbrella. We know that. It's a part of, in a cog in the WWE machine. That's absolutely true. You have some out there, for whatever reason, that still may refer to NXT as the best uh, brand that WWE has. I think that's crazy. I don't know why the hell you would say that. Is it the 650,000 people or so that watch it each week? Oh, that's something to point to and say that's the best. But you'll have those that seem to think like it's its own like main big-time legit brand. And the reality is it is a developmental brand. It absolutely is. It's featured that way. It's presented that way. The vast majority of the talent that is there are under the developmental nature and scope. It is not presented as an A-League product. It's not intended to be. It's an avenue for WWE to generate more revenue in terms of television deals. And for that, you know, that's cool and great. But it's not a major brand. It is absolutely a developmental brand. And we all know this. Like, we know that the name of the game should not be, like, to be as big as you can on NXT. Like, why would you do that? You want to apply your craft at NXT, get better, position yourself to come up to Raw or SmackDown where the audience is much larger. The name of the game in wrestling is to make as much money as possible. Nothing else comes close in terms of importance. That's just the way it is. And... If you're not in that business to make as much money as possible as you can, then realistically, the fuck are you doing in that business? So I say that to say that it's important to keep in mind that NXT is a developmental brand. And to me, the way I look at it is, is if you're bringing in a talent to NXT and eventually you're going to put them on NXT TV and you're going to have them work NXT pay-per-views, Yes, you want them to help your NXT business now. You want them to help you make some money with that NXT brand now. But it is an investment now in the future because you should be thinking everything about them in terms of where they fit long term in terms of the Raw or SmackDown roster. And if that's not the prioritization here, then something's really fucking wrong with this picture. You should be teaching these talents how to become WWE superstars, how to become characters, how to become personalities, how to work the WWE style, teaching them maybe some of the uh, fundamentals such as the, the hard camera side, all of those types of things. Like you, that's what this developmental brand, this developmental territory is for. It's to prepare them for the next level. This is not the last stop. It is a stop on the journey. So to me, I look at that and I say, you should be working on the stuff here, figuring out what's going to work, what they can latch onto, what they can make happen, so you can then take it on to the larger brand. Which brings me to this talk about Karrion Cross and Scarlet, and talking about the notion that they're ready to come up to the main roster. They're about to come up to the main roster. And you know, I certainly say, you look at somebody like a Karrion Cross, beyond question to me. The approach that you should be taking with a guy like him is we want to develop him because we are picturing him as a future main event pay-per-view opponent for a guy like Bobby Lashley, a guy like Drew McIntyre, a guy like the Tribal Chief Roman Reigns. Like That's what you should be doing. You should be growing his skills in that light, preparing him to be in that spot that someday he could be that big time opponent for that guy. Like you think about many years ago when Glenn Jacobs got the Kane gimmick. That was designed for Kane to ha have the Undertaker to work with. Undertaker needed somebody to work with. Undertaker needed somebody big and notable that could really put him at risk to work with. So you prepare Glenn Jacobs, you prepare Kane in that light in terms of getting him ready to take on the Undertaker. Like that's what you do. And then you figure out the rest later once they get up there, but you're bringing him in with that mindset. And that mindset needs to still be the case today. When you look at Karrion Cross, those are some of the people that he should be feuding with. Maybe if you want to go a step down, you're feuding him with somebody like a Big E, for example. Like, 
you're looking at him and you're trying to say, okay, if I was to bring him up in the next 12, 18, 24 months, what are some of the programs that I want to put him in? I want to put him in some big spots. Like I want to make sure that we get out of him what we can to help bring up some of our other stars. You get what I'm saying? Like that feels logical. That makes fucking sense, doesn't it? All right. And it sure seems like in some ways the way they featured Karrion Cross on NXT indicates that they have that type of vision with him. So that's smart. But there's also a package, a part of the deal that's Scarlet too. And this is where I come back to, you're talking about bringing him up to the main roster, but there are already reports and rumors talking about that they're going to split these two up and have Scarlet go on her own and Karrion Cross go on his own. And, and the, the fundamental question I ask here is, what the fuck is wrong with you, WWE, if that's what you're going to do? Why would you sit there and have them be a package deal, bring them in as a package deal, work as a package deal, get to your top spot in the NXT hierarchy as a package deal, which in theory, when the guy is the fucking NXT champion, his next stop, if he's not a complete loser, doesn't completely suck, should be to go to the next damn level. Now, there should be a work up here, a hierarchy here, and as you get to a certain point, you move him the fuck on because you got to keep things fresh and you don't want to have him fucking stagnate. I know a lot of NXT fans love Adam Cole, but the biggest mistake they made with Adam Cole is once he got to the top and then came down just a little bit, he should have fucking been gone. He should have been on Raw. He should have been on SmackDown. Same thing with Johnny Lane face, Johnny Gargano. Now you get to the place where these guys get into a rut and they get to be victims of some bad creative. And now... You know, they're much further away from of an appearance on Raw or SmackDown on the main roster, which should be the ultimate goal at the end of the fucking day, than they were before. Why in the fuck would you break up these two when they've been in a package deal the entire time? Again, NXT is your developmental. Everything you're doing at NXT should be preparing them for Raw or SmackDown. Why would you then sit there and get ready to bring both of them up to the main roster and fucking split them up? That's stupid. Now you change the dynamics. Now you change the structure for not just Cross, not just Scarlet, for fucking both of them. And why? There's absolutely no reason for it. There's absolutely no purpose for it. It absolutely makes no fucking sense. And I know we're used to the WWE Ruining fucking everything, like my old hashtag, hashtag WWE ruins everything. They damn near seem to sometimes. But this seems like it's a very cut and dry fucking thing. You bring this guy up and he feuds with some of your bigger guys, some of your main event type of guys, almost like a quasi brawn replacement in some ways. Not entirely, but in some ways. You've got him with a potential fucking heater. Somebody that can help him get some heat and Scarlet. Like, again, there's a package deal here and they know how to work off of each other and they've been working together for however long and now you want to sit there and split them the fuck up? Then what the hell were you doing down with them in NXT the entire damn time? Where's the breakdown in communication here, Vincent? Hunter? Why would you put them together, keep them together, have them continue to linger together, and then even entertain breaking them up before they ever actually make a debut on the main roster. Knowing that most of the people that watch NXT, especially if they know that Karrion Cross and Scarlett are going to debut, are going to watch either Raw or SmackDown, depending upon which show they make an appearance on. Why would you prepare them as one thing and then immediately take them away from that? This is not a situation where Karrion Cross and Scarlett were under one gimmick with impact, let's say. And as a result, they came in and you had to entirely shake shit up because you didn't own the intellectual properties. You didn't own this. You didn't have rights to that. Like, that makes sense. But you don't have that here. You don't have that. Why, 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 why would you fucking do this? Could you imagine sitting there and I use a sports analogy. You can pick a sport. I'll pick golf. Imagine telling somebody that they need to work on driving the ball straight and saying that the course they're going to play this tournament at, it's the most important thing. You've got to be able to hit the ball straight. And then all of a sudden, you send them instead to a tournament 
where the most important thing is distance. It doesn't matter if you're wild off the fucking tree because there's very little penalty for doing so. And in fact, if you're strategic about it, like let's say a Bryson DeChambeau, it could really work out at times to the point where you might win the fucking tournament because you intentionally miss because you hit it so long the fucking obstacles don't matter. So you've been preparing this player to play one style and then all of a sudden playing an entirely different style. It'd be like a fucking NFL or college team preparing to play against the triple option. They're playing against the wishbone and you're practicing for weeks having to play against the fucking wishbone. And then the team that you end up having them play against is running five wides all goddamn late day long. Why would you practice one set of skills or one type of packaging just to entirely shake shit up. Again, makes no fucking sense. It can ruin the confidence of one or both of the talents. It ruins the package. It changes it for fans. Like, it, it's just illogical. NXT is your developmental brand. It does two and a half times less the viewership of even Raw, let alone SmackDown. It should be leveraged as such. You get talent in for a certain period of time, you do the shit down here, you figure out what works, you figure out what doesn't, to the point that you say, bam, by the time we're ready, we get them to the top. Then it's time to cycle them, move them the fuck up to Raw or SmackDown, and let's run with it up there. You've seen this quite a bit. They have these guys and gals down in NXT and they're one type of gimmick, one type of character, and then they bring them up to the main roster. Vince doesn't know, Vince doesn't get it, Kevin Dunn doesn't know, doesn't get it, doesn't fucking understand it. And they immediately change what these guys and gals are about, and it fucking ruins them. The roster on Raw and SmackDown is littered with them, and NXT too for that fucking matter. Either stop writing, producing, and booking your NXT show to be so heavy on the smart mark, hardcore fan focus, or B, sit there and say, you know what, everything we do with them should be to prepare them for the main roster, so that way when they're ready, they can come up as is to the main roster and we can fucking run with it. It's just astoundingly stupid to me that WWE seems to intentionally seek out ways to undercut themselves and their fucking talent for no good reason whatsoever.